Hi, I'm Hallie. And I'm Nate. Uh, this is Al McKee Wood Fired Pottery. I'm going to demonstrate throwing a mug. I'm going to turn my wheel on, get my hands wet, and start to center the ball of clay. You have to work it back and forth a little to get it nice and centered and even. I'm applying even pressure with all of my fingers to get a nice centered ball of clay. I'll open up the bottom a little. Pull the pot out so there's a nice flat bottom. So this will be the bottom of the mug. And then slowly squeeze the walls and pull them up. So this takes a few motions to get the mug to its full height. Again, squeezing my fingers toward each other, lifting up the wall of the pot. Trying to keep an even pressure. And I'll do that three times and then it's the thickness it needs to be. I just need to use this tool here, this scraper, to make the final shape. And that usually takes a couple of passes as well. So I've got my hands inside just slightly over where the scraper hits the clay. And they both kind of guide that wall of the mug up and out to its final shape. Of course, you can make any number of shapes. I'm scrape the bottom clean. Take the water out of the bottom. Make sure the rim is smooth since that's where you'll be drinking from. Take my wire, slide the wire through the bottom, between the bottom and the wheel. And then with clean hands, I'll take the mug off of the wheel and just set it on the board. And I would continue with mugs, I would make maybe 20 at a time and fill up a couple boards and then the next day I would handle the pots. When I met Nady, suggested I take a pottery class and so I kind of fell in love with him and pots at the same time. So we've been running our own studio, Al McKee Wood Ferret Pottery, since 1999. We apprenticed for a potter down in North Carolina for two years before that. So since 1997, we worked down in the pottery in North Carolina from 1997 to 99, and then moved back up here and built our first kiln and set up a workshop. We lived at that first place we rented for four years and then moved out to where we are now, our current location, in 19, uh, 2004. Once the pots have been made, um, then if we're going to add any handles or trim any feet on the bottom of bowls, we do, usually do that the next day. We let them set up overnight so that they're a little bit hard. We call it leather hard. Uh, they're still damp, but they're, they're stiff. In order to make the handles stick to the, the clay of the mug, we score the mug from just making a rough surface and use a little bit of slip which is just a, a real liquidy clay. We'll add that to that scored surface. It just gives something for the handle to grab onto. The handle is applied. It gets pushed onto, the, onto that roughed up surface and smoothed out. Once that connection is made, 
come up, come under here, get that smoothed out, and then using water, start smoothing out the handle and forming it. Smoothing out that connection a little bit, and then bringing it down over, checking to make sure it looks okay, and then attaching it to the bottom. Pushing it together with the thumb there. And then it's attached. And so then usually we wait, then now this is wet while this is dry. We need, usually need to wait then for another day or so until we do the glazing or any kind of decorating we're gonna do. And then the very last step after the handle is finished is we mark the pot with our studio stamp. So this is a finished product. This is our finished mug the one that we were demonstrating throwing and handling. So this is fired, it's ready for use. You can use it for hot liquids, cold liquids, it's microwave, dishwasher safe, so very functional. There's another mug here, this is a glazed mug. So this has no glaze on the outside of it. It's got a glaze on the inside, but it's just got the effects of the wood, wood kiln on that. This is a glazed mug. We do a few different glazes, not a lot of um, bright colors with the, the heat that we get in the kiln, but a lot of earth tones. We have some really shiny smooth glazes, some more matte glazes, and you can see there's a lot of pots that are unglazed on the outside, and they will look different from one side to the next as you turn the mug or the jar or the pot around, and that's kind of the beauty of the wood fire, getting a different look on each surface. And each of our glazes are made out of kind of local materials, um, wood ashes, and uh, you know, kind of not commercially processed materials, things that we've uh, ground ourselves, or clays and different things like that. And normally during the studio tour, our showroom is open, and you can come visit the studio tour. We've got a lot of different, um, different styles of, and sizes of plates and platters, and small ones and large ones, tumblers, wine chillers, a lot of different styles of vases, bowls, uh, other handled vessels, like uh, a couple different sizes of pitchers. One of uh, the signature items that we've been making a variation of for years are our fluted bowls. These are thrown as a, as a slightly thicker bowl, and then when they're dry, we flip them over and carve uh, kind of a spiral pattern into the bottom of them. And they're available in a couple different glazes, this darker, uh, very shiny glaze, and then a lighter color as well. We have a couple different sizes of these. We make a lot of different sizes of wall vases. These are vases that we throw upside down on the wheel, close up the top, and then take them off the wheel. Once they're taken off the wheel, I flatten them. So just place them on the board. So you can see they've got a nice flat back so that sits flush up against the wall. They also have a little hole in the top that will slide over a nail. So people <laughs> use these a lot of times for fresh flowers. The whole water they don't seep out toward the wall. So most of the time people are using these for fresh flowers. Sometimes they'll have just a little, just one of the real small ones on a uh, alongside a window or in their bathroom and people have also used them for wooden spoons in their kitchen holding paint brushes but they're a nice a nice thing for people when your shelves are full and you don't have any more cupboard space or shelf space you can always find a place on the wall so they're kind of nice so we do the the small size this is our medium size wall base and then this is the large wall base our dinner plates and side plates, we have a few different glazes. There are a lot of times people get different sets of, of matching plates. They get sets of a variety of plates. So this dark glaze is one of our top sellers, this kind of blackish glaze. We put one layer of a slip on, a high iron slip, and then wipe our fingers through that first layer of glaze. And then we'll pour another layer of glaze on when that first one is dry and then that creates that different thickness of the glaze so it looks a little different and we like we like this glaze a lot there's also this lighter glaze and again now this this glaze we put a white slip on 
also wipe our fingers through that glaze. This is kind of a grass pattern and then add another glaze on after that. So these three are kind of our main, our main staples for the plate glazes. This blue plate, it looks a little dark, but it's kind of a shade of blue. We put a, a glaze on and then paint a pigment over the top of that glaze. And then afterwards, I would carve this fine decoration with a little nail. So that kind of creates this pattern. And this, this glaze we've done the longest. We've done this glaze for almost since we first started. The pattern has evolved a little, but this is a nice, a nice uh, variety of plate as well. So we have the side plates, the dinner plates, and soup bowls for a kind of a standard dinner set. So this is our our soup bowl here. So that would go with the with the dinner plate, and there would be a side plate that you could have as well. With plate settings, people mix and match. People get matching. They sometimes don't have the soup bowl. Sometimes they have different sizes of bowls. Sometimes they'll have a mug or a tumbler. You can get pretty much anything you want to make your setting what you need. We also have these smaller bowls, so the soup bowl is a little bigger. We've got these bowls that are just a little smaller, but they also go nicely with the plates. So it's just kind of a matter of what the customer is looking for. There's always a variety. This is our kiln. We have had 59 firings in this kiln, so our next firing will be the 60th firing. So it's held up Held up pretty well considering. So the kiln is made of fire brick and there's a high temperature castable on the outside of it. So it's the it's an insulating castable. So the kiln gets up to 2300 degrees at the top temperature. So the front is very hot. You would burn yourself if you touched the bricks. The outside it's also hot but it's not not quite as as hot because of this insulating castable. So when we are ready to load the kiln, we've, it holds about 700 pots, and we walk into the kiln and load the pots from the back forward. So we kind of load ourselves out of the kiln. So we would start with planters in the very back, then there are three sections where we stack bricks and silicon carbide shelves and pots. So the pots go from wall to wall, from floor to ceiling, so they fill up all of that space. We do leave a gap about eight inches wide between each stack of pots, and that is for side stoking. So we'll put wood in the sides of the kiln, and that they just slide just barely in between the shelves of pots. So once we get the pots loaded, we'll work out to this very front step. That's the last of the stacks of pots. And then this area here is left open for the firebox. When we're done loading, we brick up the front door and have one small hole here for air and for stoking and then a small hole down at the bottom that we have a shelf leaning up against and then that is kind of how we control the air. So the hole, the main hole for stoking is right about here. We pull this door down. So when the door is bricked up, the bricks come out to meet this door and every time anyone stokes, we, we pull up the pull up the door, put the wood in, and pull the door back down. So it looks a lot different now than when it's, when it's going, when we're firing. By the end of the firing, it's kind of a living, breathing thing of flame inside, and there's flame that goes through the kiln of the chimney, but each pot is marked by that flame and ash. So they're sitting in the middle of that fire. As the fire rushes through it, it's it's uh, marking each pot as it goes. So by the end of the firing, this firebox here has a huge pile of embers, and that's kind of what keeps the heat going, that driving heat. So each time we stoke, the wood is instantly consumed by fire. We, we stoke through the door, the wood instantly catches fire, and then that instant burst of heat is what keeps the temperature going, but that burning mass of embers is always there. We do start with a two-day campfire, so we just have a little campfire in the, on the firebox floor. We use kind of firewood type pieces for that, and that just kind of dries everything out. It dries the floor of the kiln, it dries the pots, just makes sure everything is, is all dry and ready. 
after the after the preheat, then we would start with just short pieces of wood and take that to about 1600 degrees and then we switch to long slabs. And by the end, we're using the long slabs in the front and the skinny little pieces that go in the sides. And we keep that going for about two days. So four days total, two days of a preheat and two days where we're bringing the temperature up. This is one of the side stoking ports. Normally when we fire, you have to wear jeans and long sleeve shirts, welding gloves and a mask over our faces. Right now I can touch this because we're not firing. So this hole corresponds to the gap that we have in the shelves of pots. So we can open this door and then slide two or three little pieces of wood into that gap and then close the door. That helps to bring the temperature back through the kiln. So the parameter is going through the kiln right here. That measures that heat right there, but we also need to bring the heat back. And so we would go through, stoke through the side. So we'd stoke this, this back hole first and then move up to the next one, stoke that. And there are three holes on the other side. So a lot of times we have two people, one is stoking the sides, one person is stoking the front. And when you open these, these little doors, you can see the pots. The pots are very close by, right up to the hole. There's just a narrow gap for the wood to slide in. But you can look in and see what the glaze looks like. You can tell if the glaze, if it's melted or not. We do also use cones to, that measure heat saturation. And you can see different spots in the kiln we set up during the, our loading process. So you can see the, the cones and that measures heat saturation and tells us when the, the pots are officially done. The kiln and the firing process are kind of a large part of what really makes our pottery a little more unique. Uh, you know, as the pots are fired in here for four days to a, a top temperature of 2400 degrees, that flame and the ash is moving, moving through the pots and depending on how they're stacked, it's kind of weaving this color pattern that then stays on the pots. And if you look at the pots in the showroom, when you come out here or online, however you're able to see them right now, and you, you turn the pot around, you'll notice one side is different from the other. There are little crystals growing on this side and maybe a different color on that other side. And that is kind of a story of how it was in the kiln and how the flame has marked it during the firing. And that's one of the things that, that originally drew us to the wood firing um, process and one of the things that keeps us interested in it. And just also the very, the cyclical nature of it in terms of you know, with a larger kiln like this, um, there's kind of a real rhythm to the buildup of making all the pots, um, the long firing. By the time you get everything loaded into the kiln, uh, a few days for firing, cooling down, unloading, every pot that comes out of the kiln has to be scraped down and smoothed out to get the, you know, any ashes that may have um, landed on it during the firing. You know, it's, a, it's like a two week process by the time they go in to the time they come out as a finished product. Thanks for watching our video. Uh, hopefully next year you can come out and visit us in person, but until then, buy some stuff online and we'll hope to see you then. Thanks!